welcome everyone to the Zorch Podcast. I am Chris Zorch, and on today's show, we have a really good treat. We have one of my former teammates, which is pretty cool, Notre Dame legend, uh, second overall pick in the 93 draft, uh, proprietor of Mirror Wines, and Goshen High Red Hawk, Rick Meyer. Everybody, yes, what's up, brother? How are you doing? Long Good time no you. talk, man. How are you? Long time no talk. It's great to see you. That's awesome, man. So uh, there's so much stuff I want to talk about. Um, first thing, just to kind of get the ball rolling, um, how's the whole COVID thing kind of affected the family? And, I mean, I know you got kids at other places. So, I mean, how's that been? You know, um, like everyone, I suppose, it's kind of nice to have your kids around more than they would have been. Sure, sure. Um, there's a lot of things that we had to adjust, but I, you know, I appreciated just seeing my boys more, um, especially last fall. Um, now they're back in school and, and okay. starting over again. But, um, you know, people, we've been healthy. We've been fine. We're, we're kind of minding our own business and just going ahead, doing what we do. But it's just fun to be together. Okay, that, that's, that's good. Um, nice to know that everybody's safe. Um, this is, I think you have such a fascinating story because literally Goshen High is a stone's throw from the University of Notre Dame. And I, I just got to ask you, when you were, when you were born, I mean, your dad's a former coach, correct? Former football coach. Yes. When you, I mean, was it like stamped on your forehead you were going to Notre Dame? I mean, what, what was the deal? No, it really wasn't. Um, you know, my family's not Catholic, so it, it wasn't quite like some of the guys that went to these Catholic schools in other cities. Sure. Their, their sole mission was to make it to Notre Dame. I didn't feel that way as a kid. Um, I, as a fan, as a spectator, I, I appreciated Notre Dame and I watched and I could see all that stuff like, you know, up close and in person growing up. But um, I, I'm kind of like a Big Ten so, you know, in the middle of the Big Ten schools. So sure. Purdue and Indiana and Michigan, Michigan State, and Ohio State and all that. I mean, that was kind of like the center of the universe. Uh, Notre Dame was a part of the, you know, geography of that. But, okay. um, I, I, you know, I didn't see the difference until I got old enough to know kind of the, the you know, what my options were and who the coaches were and what, you know, what was going on with different recruiting stuff. So, it, it kind of came late. It really, it wasn't. It wasn't real obvious. I, a lot of people have always asked me, you know, were you always going to Notre Dame? No, you know, if you guys aren't winning a championship in '88, I, I probably feel different about <laughs> going. <laughs> but that helped a lot. Nice. Well, okay. So you're there. I mean, you obviously had crazy success in high school. So lose coming to the house for the first time. What was that like? Uh, you know, I had been around him enough, um, and, 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 you know, I, I've seen you. I've, I've actually listened to some of your other podcasts with some of the other guys. Like Coach Holtz has, like, this um, mystique or this um, kind of presence that's different for, for a sure. little I, like, <laughs> we're, we're, we were all scared of him, right? <laughs> all these years later, but. Um, it, 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 it just was like a big deal for him to come visit us, even though it was a 30 minute drive, <laughs> uh, Bar Barry Alvarez was recruiting the area. Okay. Rado was a huge part of the recruiting stuff in those years. Um, all those guys were, I was in contact with, and I just felt part of it. So when I could visit, you know, on, on Saturdays for, for games in the fall of 88, as a high school kid playing on Friday nights. Um, wow. it just, it was like cool to just be a part of, not a part of the team, but like, I got to know you and the other guy, sure. um, just being in the locker room and, and kind of being comfortable around people like coach Holtz. And, and then when the time came, I had to make a decision and it, it, <laughs> right on. so, I mean, obviously I'm assuming you had, uh, I mean, I'm sure you were recruited all around the country, but what were your five visits? You kind of named some, some schools that were, were big 10 schools where they, all Big Ten schools, or were you thinking about other places? You know, I was my, my final schools came down to Michigan, Stanford, Florida okay. State, Miami. Oh wow! And and I visited Indiana because it was 
I'm an Indiana guy and I, and I um, just wanted to participate in that too. Um, in a different time frame, maybe I, you know, wind up there, but um, th- those were the schools at the time that meant the most to me. I, ha- I mean, I, I think I still might have all those letters, you know, remember how they wow. you know, didn't get emails or, or right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it was coaches and like signatures from Bobby Bowden or wh- whoever these guys. Sure. Or so um, I, I was just thrilled to go through the process. Um, I didn't, I didn't fear leaving home. It's just like of all the years in my lifetime that it made sense to go to Notre Dame for me, it was 1989. Mm. I mean, I, that was just the time that, that, that was really following like, huge success, a coach on the rise, uh, the right kind of team, the right kind of momentum. And that's exactly what I signed up for. And that's what I got. So you had some very memorable moments. Um, at the school, I could remember one, and actually, I'm gonna try to find the photo. Some somebody took a photo. I don't know if you remember this, but you happened to be fully clothed, and I unfortunately was not. And I think I just got off the shower. We were talking. I mean, it was something kind of crazy, and somebody snapped the photo. I have to find that because I I, I know it exists somewhere. Yeah, I, I don't know if you remember that. I'm sure it's not one of the things you want to remember, but I don't know if you remember that one. I, I have. Chris, I have some funny photos. Um, I, I, I don't want to share those. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we, we had a lot of fun travel stuff and bowl games and all those things. Um, I, I can remember, I have, like you, I have piles of pictures somewhere. I just, I just I don't know where exactly everything is. Uh, but once I kind of uncover some of them, um, it's, it's like a snowball effect of all these memories and everything. I just found the one when president Reagan was in our locker room at USC wow, my freshman year, you know, and I've been looking for that for years and I just going through some stuff. I found this. Mm. Pictures. So yeah, what, what you're t- re- referring to, I'm sure is very real. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think one of the things that, that I think was, was what a smart on coach Holtz's behalf. Every time he went to one of these bowl games, they provided cameras for us. Yeah, and you know it wasn't like it wasn't a Polaroid, it wasn't like the planet. It was like actual cameras, and so it's interesting because like I don't know if I'm a 19 year old kid, 18 year old, 20 year old kid, if I'm taking pictures everywhere. Like you know, it, it's not like I went to Radio Shack and bought a camera. I mean, but they, they were provided for us. I think that was a really ingenious part on their part. Yeah, I mean the experience. I mean we signed up for an experience you know, from academics throughout the athletic stuff. So to have the memories and to to actually give us a a way to kind of cap, you know, capture some of those things, um, you know, was really smart. It it, it dangerous. It's the same. (laughs) But mostly, you know, and and gosh, I I love looking at like those old pictures of my buddies and all our guys and, um, the, fun, the fun stuff we did. I mean, you know, giving a kid a camera is different. You know, today they, right. they, they all have phones. Right. They, they do all the stuff they do, the social media and everything else. Um, your life's kind of out there. But, but for in our era, um, you had to, like, take the time to actually snap a shot. Yeah. And, and then we'll get it developed. <laughs> and, and then, and go through the, you know, go and get it done. So, yeah, those, those, are, those are huge memories for me and, and, and things I'll cherish forever. Yeah, well, speaking about that, um, why don't talk about the snowball, but do you, outside of that, kind of, what was your, your most memorable moment when you were at Notre Dame? And, and it may be the snowball, I don't know, but do you have one? You know, I, that's a huge one for me because it, we were seniors. It was senior day. It was our last go around. The previous couple classes uh, d- didn't win their last game at home. And I, I don't know why I remember that or knew that, but it just kind of resonated and meant something to us. Um, we had tied Michigan, you know, we're, we're in a game where we could, we could kick an extra point and tie and th- there was no overtime and all that, obviously. So to, to, to go for two and win, you know, the drama was pretty sick and, and like the snow part was very cool for the f- photography and all that. Um, I kind of think my first game playing um, Michigan and winning in a sort of dramatic fashion was 
equally, you know, important. And, and I mean, I was probably younger enough to, to not even realize the impact of it, but, but the emotion you have on senior day is different. And, and so to me, the snowball probably wasn't the most important game we won, but it was the most fulfilling game that I can say I was a part of. And we won bowl games and we won other big games, but it was, it was like the last time we're going to be on that grass, it, it felt good to walk off a winner and, and especially in a dramatic fashion. Now you have three boys. Um, they're, they're, they're all apparently very athletic. They're just like their dad and their mom, Stephanie. I'm assuming Stephanie's uh, athletic because I mean, if not, I don't think all the genes came from you is what I'm saying, I guess. She must be. Yeah, she must be. <laughs> so, I mean, you kind of talk about, you share with us these kind of memorable experiences of what they meant to you. Like, I mean, are you kind of sharing these with your current student athletes? I mean, can you kind of, kind of share those conversations that maybe you have on the phone long distance? You know, with my boys, I've never had to tell them or talk to them about me. Like, it got shoved down their throat probably enough when they were young and, and they saw things and, and they barely remember me playing because um, when I stopped in 04, or, or, you know, Mo was only, you know, six years old and Oliver's four. Charlie okay, so, so, so Mo's currently at Notre Dame playing lacrosse. He's a senior, yeah, in South Bend, um, probably going to do another year, get an MBA. So he's had a good experience uh, suffering through the cold right now. It's been you know, kind of the hard part, but uh, <laughs> Oliver's at Michigan playing lacrosse. He's a sophomore. Nice. Having a good experience. Got a bunch of great kids around him and good families. And then Charlie's a junior in high school here in San Diego. And, uh, you know, kind of got cheated out of a season of sports. Sure. Sure. Months, but I hope, you know, we get to play. Um, but, but, you know, I've been able to kind of introduce them or, or, you know, some of the people from my past have been able to help them a little bit with some of the recruiting or just, just sort of connecting a few dots here and there, but they have to do their own thing. And they're, and they're actually playing different sports. Um, they all played football, but I think in the end, you know, the, the, the older two are playing lacrosse and Charlie could go baseball or football. So wow. either way, you know, the school part matters and, um, you know, it's it's crazy to reconnect with people, crazy fun to reconnect with people all these years later who were a part of my recruiting process or maybe coaches along the way who now, you know, re-engage even sure. guys like you, you would know that, that are coaching at different places and they're asking about Charlie or they're mm. asking about, you know, any of the boys. So, you know, it's fun. I, I didn't have to shove any of my stuff down their throats <laughs> happened the way it happened and okay uh, proud dad you know that's awesome that that has to be awesome so I, I don't know a lot about lacrosse but i'm assuming is it kind of do you get the same thrill when they score i mean i don't I, some, the ball has to go in the nets at some point right it's like yeah. hockey but you're running around it's high scoring hockey on grass the there way you go. okay learned right. it and um i knew nothing about it when when mo started playing years ago um, it's not difficult to like. It's it's fast paced. It's it's contact. It's there's finesse. There's all these different things. But um, yeah, you, you know, scoring is important. Um, you know, typical games, twelve to ten or something okay. like that. Not like soccer scores, but it's right. Uh, it's more even high scoring than than football as far as the number of scores. But um, you know, a lot of the guys aren't involved in the scoring part. They're they're playing defense or they're right. Or they're, or they're facilitating the, the points. So, um, you know, it's, it's just been fun to learn the game. It, it, as a parent, it's been fun to meet the other families, sure. the other kids, the other characters, and, and, and kind of host them coming west because most of these people are East Coast oriented. Right. I was going to say, I didn't know that it was big. Is, it, is lacrosse big in California? It, 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 yes. Not, you know, not like Philly or Baltimore, but, but it's exploded in the last – 15 years, if not 10. Okay. It changed a lot in, in my boys, you know, lifetime in, in which, which is why they're involved. Otherwise, you know, they'd be, they'd be playing the other sports, you know, but, but lacrosse is a good fit for them. And it's been a good fit for our family. Fun, Cause I get to be the dad who 
doesn't know the rules. It doesn't know all the names. And just I'm learning every time I watch him play. Oh, that's that that has to be awesome. So how is that trip? I mean, are you guys do you guys have a chance to see him play all the time? Are you, are you, are you guys trying to get to some of the games? How does that work? We travel um, you know, in in the normal situation. Sure. I would I would try to make around half the games just because it's, okay. you know, now I'm splitting, you know, with two different schools. So right. it'd be a lot. This year, I don't know yet. I don't know what to expect. I mean, Oliver plays in Maryland Saturday. They're not allowing any spectators, so I'm not going to – Any at all? Wow. Yeah, not even the home people. So we got to pick and choose, you know, where we want to be. But you want to see your kid and and just dinner afterwards and that kind of stuff. So, you know, up until the middle of March last year, we were kind of figuring out how to live – half of our time in the Midwest, really. Uh, so, you know, I'm in Ohio State driving up to Ann Arbor, coming through <sighs> and, and just making the circus, knowing that this isn't a thing that's going to be forever. This is a four, five, six-year. Right. So this year, I don't know yet. We've we've kind of made some plans to travel, but we're waiting to see what we're allowed to do. Okay. Uh, but, you know, we, we still have one at home who's playing <laughs> here. So we're <laughs> In that kind of crazy time where everyone said you're going to get to, and, and I didn't really listen, but it, <laughs> there's never a dull moment. Oh, God, that, that is awesome, man. So we talked about a great moment uh, athletically for you. Was there, um, conversely, did you have a kind of non-athletic moment that, that, that you remember? Um, I was talking to Tim Brown the other day, and he came up with one that I thought was hilarious. He came back after winning the Heisman. He came back, and his, his Spanish professor was like, "No, you weren't here. You failed the Spanish test." And he's like, "What? I got it. you see this? I got I got this." And he was like, "Nope." No. So he had to wind up going to the president and getting like like a letter that so he so he's allowed to, to take the exam again. I mean, I don't know if you have anything that extreme, but I mean that was his moment, and that now. You know, even though it sounds kind of crazy, you know, he, he kind of always remembered that. He remembers the professor's name, kind of remembers that scenario. And I think simultaneously, we both said that would only happen at Notre Dame. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I listened to you guys talk about that, and it was fascinating because I've known Tim a long time, and I hadn't heard a, a few of the things he's – Yeah. Um, you know, my, my experience, you know, that wasn't football and, and was pure just – Notre Dame stuff. I, you know, I was lucky when I came in, I was in a class with a, it was, I think around 20 of us, maybe 15 to 20 of us. And we stayed together for a few years, but Monk was, was our professor. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So we spent time with Monk. And then Monk and Loy was the, was the president during, during that time. President. And then kind of like winding down, but uh, he lived in Soren for all those years and still still has, is, which is amazing. And we we would meet in Soren Hall with him about a literature class and 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 talk through experiences and 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 you know some some current event things or just what we were reading. Um, and and you know I had like a completely separate world from mm. going on over at Loftus and right. And, um, yeah, that that to me, I mean, honestly, like a lot of the classroom stuff kind of blends together. Sure, that sure. stood out or that stands out all these years later because it was very intimate. It was, it was a small group. It was an impo- very important person, historical person for the university and on campus at the time and even now. Um, and, and and I'll never forget like that feeling and being you know honored enough to you know be a part of that group. Um, and when I bumped into him, you know, it, it's like instantly we're, we're just talking about, wow, you know, gosh, good to see you. How's your, how's your family? You know, and, and that, and, and that, that means a lot to me because this is a person who's been all over the world right, and right. like, you know, respected globally. Um, and so it was, it was cool to kind of have the chance to interact with him and have some like private time with him and, and spend time in his, in his, area which soren hall what you know wasn't fancy oh well, yeah yeah unfortunately i live there so i knew my i knew exactly what you're talking about yeah. well you know it's interesting because i'm not sure 
in, even in this day and age, or even now, you know, I don't know if Father Jenkins is, is teaching a course, you know, and, and I would think the times of changing. I mean, you got, I mean, being the president of Notre Dame is a little different than it was 30 years ago. But, yeah. you know, I'm not sure if, he, you know, if, he, if he's teaching a class. You know what? I don't know if what, what I was a part of was something that was actually public knowledge. I don't, I don't really, mm -hmm. you, you couldn't sign up for this class. This was sort of a, um, kind of a selected thing for whatever reason, just amongst, you know, my, my, my you know, incoming class. And we stayed right. there. It was beautiful because we got to know each other for all these years, whether we lived in whatever dorm or off campus. So we, we stayed in touch. I, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if Father John and, and some of these other guys are teaching things that maybe not everyone knows about. But, sure, sure. Um, you know, it, you know, what has been really, really cool. And I got to, I got to, I want to make sure we talk about this. Having a son there or having a child there it reconnected me in ways that I never, you know, as a parent, it's different than being a student, but right. all the years in between, it's kind of like, okay, take a deep breath, come back with a different mindset. You know, we felt like we're suffering through early <laughs> And all and all the and all the work we had to do. Now I'm I'm looking at you know, basically paying tuition for a kid sure. to, to get to experience the things that we complained about, and and it's amazing to watch, you know, and learn like how it works today, how they've evolved, how all of it's evolved, and and to feel good about, you know, kind of reconnecting re kind of seeing you know all these different people all these names from the past I, i've i've had so many opportunities to bump into people and reconnect with friends who i hadn't seen and you wouldn't i wouldn't have seen but being wow. on or just opens those doors and it's just been an awesome fun thing to be a part of and you know i i, I wouldn't trade it for anything and i'm i'm and i know i know mo you know the first few months was like i don't know you know this <laughs> thing he said uh, oh, now he's trying to do a fifth year. Mm. So that's kind of the way it goes, and and it's cool to kind of go through that twice. Well, and I think just from a parent's perspective, I have a, a my wife and I we have a daughter at St. Mary's, so kind of that same experience. Well, yeah, but but it's interesting because I remember talking to my best friend, Mr. Tim Ryan, and it was funny because. I think last year, two years ago, you know, we were talking. He was like, Chris, do you realize we're the age my dad was when he came up to watch us play? And I'm like, what? Wait a minute. First of all, I'm, what? We're that old? What the heck? But, but it was interesting because kind of hearing it from you, and I, I've experienced it a little bit, but seeing it through kind of parents' eyes is a lot different and then you start appreciating things, right? You start looking at buildings and going, wow, you know, you're going to have a good time here. This is great. And you're like, I didn't see this stuff. I didn't see this shit when I was here. What's going on, you know? No, well, it's, and it's so much better. I mean. Right. Well, yeah. Right. <laughs> but I, I, I guess I'll never um, just not appreciate the history. Like the history is what drew me in. That's sure. Different than all these other places. And, you know, now that it's fancy, that's cool and that's comfortable, but there's still the history. You right. still have all that stuff. I and mean, we were married in the Basilica. You know, I, we, we, every time I go back to campus, we go to by the log chapel. We go, you know, to uh, the grotto. We walk around the lake. I mean, we, we do the things that I never took the time to do when I was there. <laughs> right, right. Honestly, you know, and you know what I'm saying. So, um, you know, it's, it's a five-star experience today, even though it can't compete probably with some of the – Maybe I don't know Clemson or Alabama or some of those sure. guys, some of the facilities for for that kind of recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, just the the whole experience thing is is like more complete than I ever realized or appreciated when I was nineteen years old. Oh right, exactly. And the thing is, it's you know it's hard because and I think one of the things that we went through being of that era where Holtz was so successful is that I don't think. Well, I'll speak for myself. I didn't realize how good we were. And because of the pressure that was on us, I don't think I really experienced it when, when I was there. You know, it, it's years later, I was like, damn, we we're pretty good. But at the time, and I guess that's really 
Coach Holtz being a good coach, right? Because if you feel like you're a national champion or you feel like you're, you're good, then, you know, you, you probably won't work as hard. And I just think it was so interesting because, but yet I think of like, how it would have been had we kind of experienced, had we um, really kind of understood how successful and how important it was when we were winning. Yeah, you know, he had a great way of keeping us in check. And, Very and, true. And, and we never, you know, we weren't afraid of anybody, but we never took anything for granted either. So, you know, that's a pretty good combo. And, you know, I don't think he would do it any differently. And I've been in contact with him a little bit recently. I think <laughs> he appreciates us more than we realize, especially the those of us who haven't maybe been in contact all these years. Um, you know, the guy coached at a bunch of different places, and he'll hang his hat on Notre Dame's oh, you know, absolutely yeah. on his statue, and and that's that's super cool. But you know we. For the age we were and and, and um, the kinds of things we needed to sort of steer away from, it was the perfect fit. It, it, it was hard. I mean, we hell, we all complained right. constantly about how difficult. And maybe they do that everywhere else, too. I don't know. Sure. But, but um, none of it was working in our favor. And, and I don't think we understood. I honestly don't think we understood how capable and how good we really were. Um. I, you know, I don't have a national championship ring. You do. Uh, I, I wish I did. I mean, more than anything, I wish I had that. But we, we were, I think we were, we were always one of those teams and we were, we were mm-hmm. everybody else. Um, but just, it's just a complicated system at the time. If we got in a playoff situation, I wouldn't right. like, like our chances, a lot of, <laughs> you know, but you know, he had a way of uh, making us fear letting him down or, or, sure. or not not doing the things that we maybe were capable of in, in a good way because it kept us it kept us kind of honest and I think that's what kind of made us unite the way we did and we it was sort of us us against the world at some time yeah. but really you know I think our friendships and our and our growth together was because of that you know we we we, we didn't just have everything handed to us it was harder right. than that Right. Well, and, and I think as a quarterback during the, the the Holtz era, I mean, you know, you had a different relationship than everybody else had. And I talked about this with with Tony a while back. I mean, can you kind of share with us a little bit about, I mean, going every day and talking to him or having to be in a huddle and him spitting at you, talking to you? I mean, he was – he was on quarterbacks all the time. I mean, what was that relationship like? It was, it was, um, it was very business like, um, because it was serious and it was, there was an agenda and we had things to go through. I, I think to me, the most, ex- the most fun, what were the timeouts, the pressure parts of the game where you, you go to the sideline and it's like, shit could hit the fan right here or, or we, we work through us, you know, whatever, and, and come up with a way to like score and go for two and win the game mm. and, and that stuff. So I, I was privileged to, to have those conversations. I wouldn't say away from that, there were like a million other just feel good conversations daily. It, it was mm-hmm. very much about doing what we, you know, going through the, the, you know, all the plays and doing our thing, you know, and you remember where he would, occasionally walk off take the ball leave practice and then it was like okay are we going to continue practice and i'm going to call play <laughs> before we get on the fly to la to play. <laughs> because we weren't practicing well or are we are we going to crumble so the, the, the there's different pressure points and i don't think everything was um premeditated some some of right. it <laughs> some of it could have been but yeah i know i hear you a lot of it was spontaneously. It just happened, and I, I, you know, I interacted with with him much more than most guys in in our, my era. But um, we always knew, like you know, he loved Tony, he loved Rocket, he loved Derek. You know, there were there was there was like you know, there were always these favorites, um, and and rightfully so. I felt like he was kind of hard on me, and I, and I probably needed that. I got what I needed, right? Better 
long term because I was I wasn't fragile that way, you know, and and you know being close to him wasn't always gr- good. It was sometimes very hard, and uh, but when when it came to you know crunch time, it helped to kind of feel like we could talk through situations and figure it out. Mm, mm. All right, so you had a chance to be involved in one of the most famous games in their day with Snowball. And having a chance to kind of make that leap into the the NFL, I mean, you were, I mean, did you have aspirations when you were a kid? Were you thinking like, hey, I'm going to go to Notre Dame, I'm going to play there four years, I'm going to win a Heisman Trophy, win a national championship, and then I'm going to go to the pros? I mean, what was that scenario like? So, you know, my dad coached high school football in, in our town. Everyone looked up to him. Um one or two guys went on to like D1. Wow, okay. Kicker and, you know, maybe a few other guys here and there. So it wasn't, it wasn't like just normal to, to expect to go to the next level and play on TV, whether it's Saturdays or Sundays. So I, I, I never really, I don't know. I mean, I might have been a junior in high school before I thought, oh, yeah, I can actually, I belong at that, you know, whether it's a Big Ten school or a Pac. 10 or you know Notre Dame or anywhere else so I no, I, I never got ahead of myself I was actually equal baseball and football so I I mean honestly my dream was probably to play in the major leagues like that was what I thought was the coolest thing um, but as my high school team football team kept winning and we got a lot of attention football stuff kind of fell in my lap quicker and 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 in a different way so I, you know, even, even into college, like, I, you know, Jake Kelchner came in with me. He was a highly touted. High yeah. too. And like one of us was going to play and one of us wasn't. And, you know, I was, tr- I was hoping to play baseball as well, but I couldn't miss any time because I was going to compete with, with Jake. And uh, I, I, you know, Tony was winding down and um, you know, I just felt like, I'm not taking anything for granted. I want to, I want to uh. hurt, see what I can do and then see what happens. So I got to, I, you know, once I got in, I didn't want to ever let it go. And I, and I could have left after my junior year, which not many guys at that point. Right. And I just, God, what, I mean, I get to be a captain. I'm, I'm going to, you know, we're going to, we're, we're a team that everyone should be <laughs> thinking about. Uh, this, this, I don't want to not do this. This is too, this is too important. And these are my best friends in the world. So, you know, I, I didn't want it to end. And, and wow. I, I, I'm glad I'm grateful for, you know, all the guys that came after and, and, and the guys like you and your class and everybody who kind of set the stage ahead of us. And it wasn't easy right before that. I mean, Jerry Faust years, and some of the coaches early classes, it was hard. Um, and it's difficult when people expect you to win when, you know, you're not exactly fighting an equal fight in some regard. Right, right. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I'm just proud of what we did. You know, I, a couple things could have gone different, which would have been awesome. But, but in, in, you know, all in all, I had no expectations. Like playing 12 years in the NFL was not my goal. It was never what I – thought was going to happen or expected to have happened. I just, that was the, the product of a lot of hard work and a lot of things going right. Sure. So now you I mean, you talked about your, your 12 year career. I mean, the, the, the average career, if folks don't know in the NFL is 3.2 years and you played 12. Um, you, you drafted number two overall to the Seahawks. I mean, that, that had to be just an amazing amazing experience for you it it was um yeah it was cool it was kind of the beginning of the change to like television of the draft and stuff i mean i didn't go to new york because i didn't want to go to new york drew okay bledsoe went um not because he knew he was going to be first but i don't know like a couple guys went and he was one of them um, I felt more comfortable being at home and, and just being with my family and friends. So, you know, the funny thing was that year, those two teams kind of showed their cards. Like they're like, we're, we're both picking quarterbacks. So it's whichever order it's going to be. So that was kind of nice to know. Um, 
the problem is you're going to go to a bad team. <laughs> right. That's the way it works out, right? <laughs> Best thing is to be like the 20th pick on a <laughs> But, you know, I, I was so excited to just have another shot to, to, to go somewhere, wherever it was, and, and compete and play and all that. And then all that happened. But um, the draft thing's kind of a blur because, you know, it wasn't the, the production it is now. That, sure. I, I, that's too much for me. But um, I, I get I get why it is the way it is. But, you know, we had an honest kind of lead up to it. You do all the combine stuff. You, they, they know everything about you. You know where, where are you going to fall in in the whole line of things, and and then go to work. And right. uh, I was ready for that. And fortunately for me, I graduated. At, uh, you know, December and end of my, you know, middle of my senior year, I guess. Right. Wait early because of all that summer school stuff we did, and I and I had the spring to just kind of get ready for what was next, and mm. and and you know get a little bit of a break, but also work out and not have to grind through the classroom stuff that was behind me um and then mini camp you know it's it's real you know you go to work and now, now the lights are on you in a different city and it's right. magnified in a different way so you and jerome kind of shared the offensive rookie of the year mvp or, or co-mvps or whatever the offense i mean that had to be an amazing kind of crazy experience your first year and just having an amazing year well it, it's actually more than that because Reggie was the third guy. So Jerome, Reggie, and I were one, two, three in, you know, most of the voting stuff. I don't, I don't know. I have a trophy somewhere that, you know, <laughs> and so, but um, the, the beauty was to, I was able to start all 16 games for, for me. I mean, Jerome's Jerome's in the hall of fame because Jerome's Jerome. I was, I was, that was, you know, a, a big year for me um, because I could, I could take the beating 16 times and keep, keep coming back and, and start all those games. And not a lot of guys prior to that had, had done that. Right. Now, it's different. Guys are more prepared going in. Um, but we were just kind of winging it. And, and I'm proud of that because that's a, that's an endurance event and, you know, away from home, living on your own, like a lot of things were new. Um, but it was, you know, that's life in the fast lane. And, and, uh, I, I was, I was happy to, you know, to go through that. I wish Tom Flores could have remained our head coach longer, right. so could have kind of built on whatever we were working on, but the NFL is not that patient. So yes, uh, you don't win enough, they move on and, and whether it's for good or bad, uh, it just, it changes the way, you know, it has to go. And, and that's, that's, that's fine. So. Yeah, I'm proud of that rookie year, um, starting all those games, <laughs> living to tell. I mean, that's that's something. But, uh, you know, Jerome obviously had more, you know, years following that were statistically amazing and, and on really good teams. And, and I'm, I'm so happy for him and all the stuff he's done all this time, too. Well, I want to fast forward a couple of years because I'm doing a little research and I kind of found out that um, – I mean, you weren't always kind of a wine kind of sewer, can I say, call you? Or, I mean, now that you're, you are a wine god now, but, um, and, and actually Drew Bledsoe kind of got you into it? Is that what I heard? It happened simultaneously. Uh, okay. It turns out he's from Walla Walla, Washington, which is where he's doing his stuff now. And, has, and this has blossomed into this amazing wine region in the U.S., we together went with our wives, went to, to Napa, you know, late night, mid to late nineties, kind of, you know, we're old enough to, and maybe mature enough to understand and listen and learn. Uh, and, and we were intrigued by it, but um, neither of us had any, any expectation to do anything with that, to turn that into business or anything post football. It was just hobby and fun. And of course, like everything, you know, things can kind of get momentum and all that. And, and now we, you know, we've, we've reconnected in wine, which is fun because there's all this history and all these inside jokes and all these different things that, that, uh, that are funny to us and some the people that are close to us. So, um, 
Yeah, I mean, he and I had way, way more in common than we would have imagined, and it makes okay. Sense. Yeah, we 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 were connected that way. So, how do you make this transition of being a a twelve year NFL veteran to being involved to the point where you're the proprietor of Mirror Wines? I mean, what type of transition was that? Was that? I mean, did you go to wine school? I mean. How does that happen? Well, it, it's a leap of faith. Honestly, um, you can invest in whatever you want. Uh, this required some funding, but it also required time and energy and 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 some direction. Um, you know, Drew and I, with Dan Moreno and Damon Heward, talked about other things. We, we, we there was a lot of talk about different projects. This was before, like the NBA guys were super into wine, and right. other football guys, and, and other sports. I mean, there were always golf and race car kind of versions of it. And and but we, I, I didn't want it to be like this washed up football guys wine. I wanted it to be like a real wine thing. And it, there happens to be the connection to football. Be, be right. Um. You know. I, I was kind of, I got pretty nerdy on learning and studying and reading all these different things that I thought were interesting. And I collected wine and I thought the small production, really hard to find cool stuff was exactly what I was looking for. Um, and that's basically the project we have now. It's, it's taken all these years um, to much, you know, kind of, it, it's still new to a lot of people because it's very small. You know the huge mainstream brands. Nothing against them. Right. Not that creative. If you discover Budweiser or whatever, whatever, anything, right? Because it's everywhere. So you know, to me, the things that were kind of hard to find or interesting in a different way were, were just cooler. So that, and I think Drew felt the same way. I mean, his brand is bigger. Um, he's got, you know, people behind him and other, you know facilities and, and they've expanded in ways that's really hard to do in napa I okay. so i can't i can't <laughs> fight the fight with some of those guys right but i like i like the game and i and we love food and stephanie's great about you know kind of we're very healthy at home and and um open-minded about wine and and food and it's just kind of fun it's kind of bouncing back and forth so did you come up with the name or, I mean, did you guys, you, did, did your team do that or how that happened? Well, the team was very small at the beginning. So, <laughs> and honestly, we, 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 we bought into um, some, some shiners, which are bottles of wine that don't have a label that were made by friends of mine who I was partnering with on this thing. And they were referring to it as the mirror vineyard project. And I'm like, okay. Mirror, yeah, oh yeah, the two vineyards mirror each other across the valley from St. Helena, as far north as St. Helena, and it's like a two and a half, three miles stretch, like literally straight across on the map. And I'm like, wow, mirror, mirror is perfect. It's kind of, and they didn't even they they had they had nothing to do with me, but it was, I didn't want to say Meyer this or Meyer that. Right, mirror was cool and it was a fun kind of way to kind of get this thing off the ground. And then, then we, you know, flipped the R's and kind of made this mirror image and, and it just worked. And, um, you know, not, not exactly my idea, but I had to bless it and say that, that makes sense to me. And let's, let's run with that. That, that, that is terrific. So I mean, the, the wine odyssey with you and Drew Bledsoe, I mean, was that, was that just kind of a competition or hey, tell us about that? So when the COVID nonsense started, I guess, middle of March, 2020, we were talking where everybody's home, like, you know, you're home, everybody's home doing, you know, readjusting maybe to whatever the normal was going to be. And, and I think, you know, alcohol consumption, especially wine, <laughs> probably up <laughs> ever before in the history of time. So we we basically went back and forth a couple of days, like, oh man, I you know remember this? Remember when we got this? Boom! And I sent him a little clip, and and I go, we should just tweet this or like push this a little bit because it's it's interesting. We have these kind of wine followers, and and it'd be, other people, and the experience, yeah, other yeah, other people should see 
and it's fun. And I'm, I'm paying attention to others that, that promote things. And, and we're not, I mean, we're, we talk more about everybody else's wine than our own wine. Mm-hmm. We sprinkle our stuff in there because it'd be crazy not to, but it's mostly about whatever we're doing at our house. How are you guys doing? What are you, what are you, what's, what's going on at your place tonight? So that's all it was. And there was really no plan. There's been zero retakes of any of those clips. I mean, they're all like first shot wow. at it and then they're not perfect, but it's, it's authentic and it's real. And so we, we really kind of, kind of pushed it for a while. And then it got like exhausting and we took a break and <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're kind of bringing it back. Cause we didn't want to just shove it down people's throats, but it truly was, you know, we've been on this odyssey for a long time. We've never called it that, but, you know, it's kind of fun. It's kind of just, you know, entertain each other with what, what, what we're doing. And it's just a check in. And it was just, we've included other people and we should probably include more, but they have to want to do it. And right. Right. It's fun. It's just it's super easy. That's, that's so interesting. Um, we're going to wind out a little bit because I may have to get out of here. Um, when you talk about your mentors, um what who as a mentor um do you remember and what did they they teach you um what was the most kind of uh valuable uh lesson uh a mentor may have taught you you know that's a great question i i i don't have a brilliant answer for that i do have an answer but i don't have the, the answer that i wish I could give you <laughs> I think everyone needs that person and I think my journey has been different because I didn't know where I was going or what I want I didn't I didn't know what I wanted to do after football and, and kind of getting going in business but I, I did have a partner uh, a gentleman named Larry Montgomery who um, was an executive at Coles in Milwaukee for a long time he was in he was a partner in the in the wine business sadly passed away in 19 um, unexpectedly with a heart attack. Uh, he, t- to me, he was my mentor. We were partners and, he, and we never talked about that like that. Uh, I didn't call him a mentor, but he really was. I mean, he had experience, business experience that I didn't. Mm-hmm. I, I really jumped into the wine thing on my own with support of my family and friends, but um, I didn't have somebody who was holding my hand through any of it or, or explaining what I should expect. It was, it was really a, you know, we're flying by the seat of her pants, but Larry was the closest thing I've had uh, to a mentor. I think my father, everything I've ever done and he's been a sounding board. Uh, he would count that way, but I would encourage, like I, I would tell my own sons, you know, I would encourage young people find somebody that you can call a mentor, have them know that they're your mentor, rely on them and, 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 you know, learn from them. The, the, the experience is so valuable. Right. Like even, even when eras change, things are different compared to pre cell phones or internet or any of that, like they're still savvy in business and, and just people that have uh, high IQ for reading other people or reading the room. And that, that, that's, that's who I would recommend you know, young entrepreneurs or young business people kind of listen to and, and rely on because there's a lot of value in that. And it's, it's really hard to define, you know, what makes that happen, but, the right. relationship, you know, and, and I don't know, you know, for you, I don't know who your mentor, but I, you know, I'm guessing there's somebody that when, when something comes up, you, you can ask them, Hey, what do you, what advice just, just like, what's your gut? tell you right and um that's a huge thing and and i'm trying to do that for my kids i don't want it to be me i want it to be somebody else maybe it's going to be you i don't know right. <laughs> but but it's an important thing to have in, in in your arsenal because experience is worth a ton and right. uh, you don't just have it because you're smart or or ambitious you know some savvy is important well bro thank you so much man this has been a blast this is so exciting um the idea that we were teammates 500 years ago and able to reconnect is great, but 
I mean, really kind of understanding and hearing these stories really kind of uh, makes me feel good because, I mean, and this is really what I want to do with this podcast, kind of bring out some kind of thoughts and, and stories that people might not have a chance. I mean, you can look on the back of a football card to find out what your stats are, but you know, as peers, we don't kind of care about that. We care about what we were doing, you know, at the hotel at the way game, you know, against USC or whatever. So I just kind of want to get those experiences. So dude, thank you so much. Um, I like to thank everyone watching on Facebook and YouTube. And most of all, my wonderful mom and daughter team of Kylie and Candy. Uh, they helped me produce and direct the show. Uh, this podcast, along with others, you can check out on my YouTube page at Chris Zorch 50 And please click the subscribe button. Bro, thank you so much again, man. This is a blast. I hope we have a chance to kind of do it again, man. Thank you so oh, much, Rick. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. All right, brother. All right. Be good, man.